They pop crowd. They pop corn. They pop culture. It's the lowdown. What is up, everyone? Welcome to the latest installment of the Lowdown Popcast. I am your host, Elliot Poston, the voice of, well, this past weekend, the voice of Palmetto Ships Wrestling. I'm also the voice of Demons Football. I had my first show back in 11 years at Broad and Vine. And tonight, I am the voice of the Lowdown Popcast. And joining me is the founder, owner, CEO of BU4U Trim Fit, former South Carolina quarterback, Marlboro County Hall of Famer, and former South Carolina uh, Athlete of the Year. Easy to say, right? Uh, good old brother of mine, Savelle Newton. What's going on, brother? <laughs> oh, man, what's up, bro? Man, I've been fighting a headache all day, but you know, you we talked about this, and I wanted to make sure that I honored everything that I said I would do. So here I am. Hey, man, I, I appreciate you jumping on, and I, I appreciate you jumping on in such short notice. Um, I had somebody uh, originally scheduled, but um, they're they're a high level pastor, um, and some things came up, so they had to um, they had to reschedule for another time. And I I reached out to you, said, Hey, man, you think you could jump on with me? Uh, tonight and talk about some uh, men's mental health and uh and uh you were more than obliged so man i just want to say i really appreciate it and thank you um but uh i know i know you got things that you've got to get done and places you got to go and i don't want to keep you too long so I, let's just go ahead and jump on into it man um first and foremost you uh you run a gym called be for you um, but it's not just about physical health. You also promote um, mental health and wellness. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think we briefly touched on it last time you were on the show. Um, different dynamic at that time. But, uh, you know, talk, talk to us about that. As a, as a man, um, and we've kind of opened up with each other about some of our mental struggles and mental health and everything that we deal with. Um, what, uh, what are some things that that drove you to say, hey, you know what? Be you for you, Trim Fit. That that's that's my calling. That's my focus. That's where I'm going. Well, um, actually, you know, be you for you, Trim Fit is is only um, is only a part of what the real umbrella is. That's be you for you, love yourself, LLC. So okay, the, the gym is actually you know just a portion of that. Um, that that actually um, came about um, you know actually in in a counseling session to um, where my counselor was telling me, you know, like, it's time for you to kind of decide what you want to do, what happy means and what happy means to you, what it feels like. And he just told me, he said, you got to be, you don't love yourself. And that just stuck with me um, to, it, it became something that, that was really, really drove me to uh, better myself and try to also help others better themselves. So, um, now you know to have a gym i kind of use the gym also as a as a space where um not only people can come in i use it also for myself when i'm dealing with things to actually go in the gym um it's it started out mostly about myself you know so um then it kind of just inviting others into here to kind of um you know better themselves uh mentally emotionally spiritually and also physically that in that order so that's where that's where we're here, located on 1971 Legrand Road, right in Northeast Columbia, and um, we we are touching people, um, not just in the gym. We also have uh, on, people who uh, join us online. So we we are definitely spreading the mission, and you know, looking to continue to add on to that aspect. And, and you know, we uh, I, I've been to your gym before. I haven't worked out, but I've been to your gym before. <laughs> Um, and I, I noticed you have a, a, not only do you support, um, men and be you for you trim fit, but you also have women who attend as well. And I, I just thought that was a, uh, a very nice touch, but 
tonight we want we want to focus on on what it mean what it means what it's like to be a man in today's society um you know one thing for me is and it's funny because i i saw your post today right and um it said it's okay to cry uh, uh elaborate on that uh well you know that post basically came right after i had just dropped my face so you know <laughs> so, so i have no i have no shame in 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 tears um and letting them go wherever i am don't matter who i'm in front of um you know uh i just see see that as a place of me you know releasing um it, it could be maybe i have done something wrong or wrong someone or it could be someone have wronged me or just frustrated at that moment. I just have no, you know, no um, shame in, in releasing those tears. I, I honestly feel that it's it's more a strength thing than a weakness. Um, yeah. when, when when you are able to, you know, be in touch with yourself to know that hey, I'm at a point to where these tears, you know, have to come out. A lot of people cry only when it gets to a boiling point. You know, I'm more I'm more of one of them people. I, I would cry about the smallest thing and, and you know, sometimes I ride I ride because um, I do a little driving, you know, um also. So sometimes I'm you know, I'm riding down the road and I'm just like, Why am I crying? <laughs> and you know, a lot yeah. of time it's a lot of times it's in the midst of worship music or or, you know, just just thinking about, you know, a time or a moment to where, you know, I feel like I could have done something better or, or given better of myself. Um, but like, I have no shame in crying. And I think a lot of men, a lot of men are so, are so prideful. And just like the word says, you know, the pride comes before the fall. And I think a lot of times that people try to hold on and be so strong and not show any type of, you know, any type of weakness to where they, you know, they fall. And I've been I've been a person that has has done that, um, you know, but now I'm just trying to, you know, get myself back closer to uh, to God. So right now it's just like I'm, I'm presenting myself like humbly to where I can just be able to express myself, whether it's through tears or scream or, you know, whatever, whatever need be at that time. Yeah, you ever find so I, I tend to I'm a crier as well. Um. I find myself crying a lot over like joy, like just being so overjoyed and so happy. So we had a wrestling event this past Sunday, Saturday, excuse me. And, um, Oh, you bet. Um, we had a wrestling event this past Sunday, Saturday. I messed it up again. <laughs> and, uh, in one moment of the, of the show, one of the guys, he, one of the girls who wrestles, her father is her manager, who's also a former wrestler. Um, in the type of the match it was, it was a big match for her. And uh, man, just seeing the emotion and the excitement and the and everything and the passion um, coming from uh, the two when they were heading to the ring, um, man, it just like it hit me. And like I put myself in his shoes and I looked at her, she was my own daughter. Um, in that moment, I was just like, Man, what what an amazing thing to be able to witness your your pride and joy um succeed. And I I find myself um more often than not just watching my kids and seeing them just do something that just it just amazes me and overwhelms me. And I just start crying. My wife laughs at me, she's like, Are you crying? I'm like, Yeah, get off me. <laughs> um but you know with with the state that men are in today um suicide rates are the highest they've ever been right especially in men um what's what's some things that what's some things that maybe a man can do um to one find maybe find that support system what what's some things that you would encourage a man to do to to help combat that that mental that mental awareness that mental health awareness the possible depression and possible anxiety what's some things that um you being in the health industry 
in the wellness industry would say, hey, there's some things that you should probably think about. Well, just, just speaking from personal experiences with um, anxiety, um, especially a person who openly, he was open, you know, open about, you know, carrying GAD for a long time. That's generalized anxiety disorder, you know, which I'm, you know, okay with sharing about that. Um, you know, I've, I've battled those, um, those issues plenty of times and, you know, and it, it those things, um, they come and go. And not, I wouldn't say not too long ago, you know, um, where I was in the same, that same state of mind to where it was, you know, where you are feeling like everything is against you. And we oh. all know, um, especially when you are a man, like a man of, um, that car- carries a little, little power about yourself and, um, you know, in leadership, you know, you know, the attacks come to you a little bit stronger than it just comes to uh, just just your everyday, what we would call just man walking around. So, um, you know, being in leadership, the attacks are a little bit lar- larger. Um, so I would say even in that experience that, you know, that I had, you got to have at least one person. <laughs> I don't care who it is, but you got to have at least one person that you can be a hundred percent just vulnerable with, like, and 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 trust that they will, you know, not leave you. Just like, you know, just like we look to, you know, God for those who believe in the believe in Him. You know, we He won't leave you, or that person won't, you know, just turn their back on you. So there has to be a person that you can actually turn to for that safe zone. Um, I know, like I said, that goes back to the whole not crying thing. It, it, it all ties together just because it says not, at, just because I'm, I'm not actually speaking of tears sometimes. It could be just like, hey, who is that one person that in in that, that bit of darkness that you know will walk in the dark and come in and pull you out? And if you don't have that one person, it gets lonely. So, you know, um, especially coming from a person who, you know, have been in a wide receiver room uh, with two of my teammates who, you know, at University of South Carolina, who both of them, you know, got to the NFL and took their lives. So, um, you know, Kenny McKinley and O.J. Murdoch, um, you know, two great young men, you know, that I got a chance to mentor while they were at USC um, and to know, like, you know, like, what if they just had that one person? What if they were looking for that one person and they may not have had it? So, you know, like you said, the suicide rates are, are at an extremely high. Um, social media, social media is, 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 is causing a lot of, a lot of these, you know, these stresses, um, the economy, the economy and some of the things, the way they are and, and men are not feeling like they are men. So um, there's a lot of struggles, but you gotta have that one person, you know, Bro, you, you, you can, you read my stuff all the time and you would say, Hey man, you know, you might not put it actually on that actual post, but you would either send me a text or you are either, um, you know, send me a DM and say, Hey man, just checking on, you know, blah, blah, blah. But we got to have that one person. Sure. And, 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 and that's why I, I came up with uh, a term. I even got the t-shirts and it's called, it's called one for one. So yeah. it, it basically what that means is just having that one voice, that one person that can inspire that that person to know that they're great and beautiful, even in any storm that they're going through. So you got to find that one person. If you don't have, I don't care if it's mama, I don't care if it's daddy, brother, sister, um, a lover, or just an old classmate, whatever it is, you got to have that one person that you can call in the midst of any dark trial times in your life that person would be there and you could trust that they would be there. What do you think it is that keeps men, holds men back from doing that? Uh, trauma. I mean, it, it's the big T. Trauma, yep. trials, tribulations, and, you know, um, a lot of men feel threatened. <laughs> you know, we feel, a lot of, a lot of men feel threatened by, um, you know, mistakes. Threatened, they, they feel threatened by, by um, you know, 
rejection. Um, it's, it's a lot of things that, that men carry around. And a lot of it comes, from, like I said, from the big T trauma. You don't know what that person, um, you know, for example, you know, I, I'm very open about things. After 38 years of, of, of living in this on this world, my mom just said something very important to me. Um, she just said something very crucial to me um, on, sun, on Sunday morning, uh, right before I went to go to church. And it was a conversation we was talking about, and I got a post up right now. We was talking about those, um, you know, those family um, generational curses and yeah, things curses, like that. Yeah. Yeah, it, the post is still up there. Every time I post something, you best believe that 99.9% .9 of the time I am talking about myself. But uh, I'm actually being transparent, so maybe it can, sure. it can touch one person. But she said something very important, and she said, you know, hey, because she heard me explaining, like, like one of the things I was like, well, you know, she would come in, like, when we were kids, me and my brother, we would... We would run to try to clean up before she gets in the house and then she comes in no matter what and she's angry she was always angry but she said i had to do that because i had to raise three boys on my own sure. and yep. and she said she felt that she needed to um give us a heart give us something you know strong so that we could get to the position that we it worked i mean we we, yep. we all are in you know business owners and things like that it worked but you know when she said that that she said she would do that then she would go in the room and cry every time but she didn't know during that time what she was doing to to us or doing to myself i can speak for myself you know it was causing trauma uh, of not knowing how you know if you got your mother and you don't know how to get loved or, 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 or right. receive love. And, and now you're getting older in age and you're trying to love someone. She don't know how to. to. She don't know how to because you're like, well, well, I didn't, I couldn't love on mama because mama was so, so, so upset or, you know, or, or, you know, I, how do you trust? How can you even trust, you know, having even a, just a, just a friend, like, like you said. So a lot of those stuff comes from trauma. Because it's too hard, you know, childhood trauma, on um, through the years trauma, teenage traumas, all these different things until you get to a place to where it's like it's you feel that it's so unsafe. You might yeah. you might fall in love with someone or you might just have friends that, that, that you can call your own or, or whatever it may be. But those traumas will keep you from being able to be open to one person or, or just feel a completely like 100 percent committed to a, a person to where that you can receive and also give everything to them. What do you think it is that, uh, maybe you don't, maybe you don't struggle with this, but I, I found myself in the past, especially where I would get, I was, I would get bouts of anxiety or depression and I would, uh, I'd recluse. I would, uh, kind of shut everyone off, kind of, um, you know, I, and I'd say, oh, I, I just, I just don't want to do anything. I just want to be with myself. But what I found as I got older, looking back, of some of the worst th things I could have done, where I, I shut the world off, because then it's, I'm just, it's just me battling me. What um, what's something you would maybe say to the guys who who maybe do that same thing? Maybe that, you know, the first moment of conflict, the first moment of uh. The, the feeling of failure um they just they they recluse they they hide away they shut the world off how would you encourage or inspire someone to say hey i know that's what you want to do but flee from that um uh, <clears throat> i guess before i before i answer that because um i haven't had that i haven't been blessed with that or privileged to have that type of 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 action so maybe yeah. you can first explain to me, maybe just real short, what does that feel like? Because someone like myself always wanted to know what it feels like. See, when, you, when you're when you in a place of leadership your whole life where everyone's always looking up to you to be that person to stand on or, 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 or you know, that how does, how does that even feel, bro? Like, how does, like, tell me. Because I, I want to know first what it feels like so I can give you the opposite end of it so we can, so we can, 
I'll maybe offer yep. a you know an answer for this. Yeah, so I, I've been around leadership pretty much my whole life as well. Um, and it's just one of those things that you feel like such a failure at times. And I think a lot of it for a lot of it for me was striving for perfection instead of excellence. So I tried to live the perfect life. Anytime I messed something up, it was hard for me to forgive myself. Um, and, uh, you know, it goes back to you saying, love yourself, right? We have to look. I hated myself. And because I hated myself, I hated myself because of my failures. I hated myself because I was not perfect. Um, I hated myself because my faith told me to be like Christ and I was failing at it. But it's because I didn't understand the redemptive nature of Christ. And I didn't understand the forgiveness of Christ. And I didn't understand the love of Christ and the grace of Christ. And I didn't, I never understood that until I got married. Right. So for so long, if I failed at something or if I got upset about something, I didn't want to lash out. I did because I, I knew I could have a temper and I knew I could get angry. And I knew I would probably say something that I would deeply regret. So what would happen was it would build up, build up, build up. I get in my own head. I would talk my own self, man, you, man, you suck at life, man. You're horrible. If you was as good as you said you would, you wouldn't do this. Um, man, you're a hypocrite, man. You're this, man. You're that. And before I know it, I'm just, I've cut myself off to everyone. I don't want, I don't want to talk to people. I can put on a facade, but deep down inside, but, but deep down inside, I'm killing myself right now. Right. So, um, so that, that, that's my experience of what it looked, what it kind of looked like was, Hey, the facade's on, you see the smiling face, but behind that face is a whole bunch of, uh, sadness, darkness, loneliness. And, um, it's because for me, even though I got saved at 12, I didn't under, I di didn't really understand the redemptive nature of Christ. I didn't understand his grace. I didn't understand his mercy. I'd, I'd learned about it, but I didn't, I didn't know it. Uh, and it was, uh, as I got older, I realized, listen, the, the closer I am to God, the louder his voice is. But if I'm, uh, but if I'm playing, if I'm just playing the part on a Sunday, then uh, I'm not hearing them throughout the week. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I totally get you. And, and, and a lot of us, you know, who did, you know, who have grown up in, you know, in, in the church or religion and things like that. Um, you know, we, we, we witnessed, uh, uh, you know, a whole lot of facades, um, you know, um, you know, even going back to, you know, like we talked about traumas, you know, talk about my father, you know, where, I, I witness it every Sunday. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so you, you get to that place to where that's what you see or that's what you have seen growing up, like facades or, you you know, yep. or people in, you know, when you're watching those that who are in those certain places in what's supposed to be one of the most, uh, you know, sacred places, the church, you know, put on facades and you know it firsthand, you know, that's that's how you grow to do it. Like, oh, OK, maybe I can put on the facade, too. And I can carry I can carry this uh, costume and wear it. I don't have to wait to Halloween to wear a costume. I can I can put it on every day. And that's that's exactly what, um, you know, people people are, are accustomed to do. Um, I was studying this Bible plan with with, you know, uh, a, a person I would say is that one person I can call do it, you know what I'm saying? It's like that. Yeah. So I was studying the Bible plan and one of the questions that just came up was like how how do you how do you handle fear? You know, how do you how do you handle like those dark moments? And it, it, it asks three things. Do you um do you stand do you fight? Do you flee? Or or do you um, do you hide? Uh, that that's that that's that's real good right there. It's like, are you a fighter, or are you someone who's going to just just run just run a little bit, uh, um, you know, just flee from it and kind of avoid it, or are you um, a person that will just hide? I think um, you know when you explain what what you're explaining right now is what are those people who just shut down. Those yep. people who shut down are your hiders. Those are the ones, the ones that go in isolation, and they, 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 they. Everybody at that point, you know, when you when you're at that dark point, you're facing the the the, the whole big failure word, or you're facing, 
a whole lot of fears of, of, of just just being uh, rejected or being a disappointment, however you want to put it. But what what are you going to do? Are you going to fight? You got your fighters. Your fighters are the ones that can stand strong and and they will, you know what I'm saying, they kind of get in there, they, they, they kind of fight and stand strong and they can move on. And then you got those like myself, I would call myself what what I would call the fleer. So I, 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 I tend to avoid things. I will avoid things, a whole lot of things, and 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 kind of go on around it. And like you said, go put that facade on. And then, you know, um, I've never been a hider. So yeah. uh, I, I've never been a person who's been awarded that space because, like I said, being called on so much. Uh, that's why I ask you, like, what does it feel like to hide? Um, I think hiding, I think hiding out of the three is probably um, the most uh, dangerous place to be in because it's just you. You yeah. know, <clears throat> it's just you. It's just you and your thoughts. And you, you're you fighting those negative thoughts and those those thoughts are just, one second you thinking, oh my God, then, then, then you fell again because that those that negative thought kick in. It's like the up and down. It's like the, narciss- the narcissist push and pull technique, but you're doing it to yourself. So at that point, in, in isolation, that gives the biggest open gate for the enemy attack. And and I think that it's scary there. Uh, it's lonely there. And mm-hmm. I think it builds up a bigger facade because it, it, it doesn't give you an opportunity to even say nothing to nobody about what you're dealing with. So uh, you're by yourself. So I would I would encourage everyone, you know, it, it, it don't hide like you cannot hide be more transparent i learned i learned in my time being more transparent and more open about anything that i got going on whether it embarrasses me or embarrasses anybody else i'm pretty sure my family look on look on facebook 100 percent on of the time and say oh my god i can't believe he said that and they would never comment they would never like it they would never do anything that's perfectly fine i just called them out on that because i know they'd be looking but um you know <laughs> but it's it's true you know like be open yeah the biggest thing that you can do is be transparent and be open because if you don't you become a liar and when you become a liar right. lying is, lying is dangerous because you you get used to it you when you get used to lying then you got bigger issues to fight you got bigger issues to fight so i would just think that most people would not need to hide and just be more be more open with themselves and and like 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 i always say be you for you and love yourself that is i have to stand on that a little bit more myself and i would encourage everyone especially men to stand on to stand on that and know that don't hide just find that one person yeah and i think it's funny because uh you know the more as you keep hiding and stuff it just gets darker right mm-hmm. so and um I like what you said about transparency. I didn't realize how, because I was a hider for so long because I was afraid of judgment. Right. So many, and I think, I think a lot of people are afraid of, are afraid of being quote unquote, being judged. But, but as I get older, I'm like, you know what? They had every, everything I was doing, which is stupid. It was wrong. Um, the stuff I was quote unquote hiding, um, you know, was me was a way of just lying to people. So, um, and I, I know you got to go and uh, so I, 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 um, so at what point do you say, hey, um, as a man, yes, yes, I've dealt with this. Yes, I've I've had this trauma in my life. Um, yes, I still deal with it. But at what point do we say, you know what? Uh, I can't. I've got to stop blaming it on that, and I've got to just say, hey, you know what? This is mine to wear now. Um, mine to wear, mine to get rid of. I can't. How, how do you encourage somebody to um, move past move past the trauma point? Because I feel like so many of us at times get stuck there, right? So we uh, we know we had this issue. We then find out what the issue is and recognize it and and give it a name, but we stay there. What is it that we can do to move past that trauma be and toward healing? Be accountable. That that's is as simple as that. Just be accountable. Like 
be a, you got like the biggest thing that that any human can do i don't care man what man or woman i know we speaking to the men tonight but accountability is 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 almost one of the biggest lethal web weapons that any person can 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 um can carry with themselves um you know you you put on the good you know the shield of faith and all these you know things like that but but there up under that there has to be some kind of sword to fight with and and that sword to fight with is accountability man it's like you know it's like okay you lied okay let's face it uh, I lied. I'm a liar. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, that that there alone, like, lives so much off of you because guess what? Now you don't have to go around caring, caring or living a lie. Or, you know, uh, you know, hey, you're right. You got me. I know that $20 you was looking for on the counter, I stole it. You know, uh, you know, here it goes back. It's just those type of things that that you can you can add on to trauma like by by just not being accountable and well, I, think- I was gonna say i was gonna say let's let's unpack accountability because <laughs> and the reason i say that is because there's so many people who they hear the word accountable and they's like oh yeah he's just gonna call me out of my stuff no nah, I, th- I think it goes deeper than that yeah yeah I- it, it, it definitely it goes way deeper um you know first you know accountable i mean i'm not webster but if i was to give um my definition of it is just being able being able to accept what is true what is what is the truth in a in a situation or in a circumstance that you are able to take upon your actions whether you feel judged or what type of consequences may come you have you have stated your stance or stated your position in something that has t- taken place that's accountability. Um, that's just my definition. I know you probably got the Webster definition. Yeah, I just pulled it up real quick because when you said that, I was like, all right, yeah, this, this will be good. So um, Webster says the obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions. Yeah. Um, uh, Google says from the Oxford uh, Dictionary, required or expected to justify actions or decisions responsible. So yeah. I mean, it goes right in right in line with responsibility, you know. So it's uh like you said, you know, someone being held responsible for the actions, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And and I think and and that is one place where I would think the hiders are. That's what I would say. You know, like you say, someone who who struggles with uh, going in isolation have accountability issues. And they can have they can have self accountability to where it's a challenge for themselves, but but to be able to either bring it to a place where um, you know they can offer up an apology. That's the biggest thing. The biggest issue with accountability is an apology, because an apology apology it it it, it takes away the um, you know the accountability part. I think a lot of times when people say, "Hey, I'm sorry for er- upsetting you," that so, takes, it takes away it, it takes away the power of of you being accountable because just because you apologize, that doesn't mean that you were accountable. So you know? here's so here here's something that I that I I completely believe in. Being sorry for something is not the same as being apologetic. Mm-hmm. So what I mean by that, so like with with our kids. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry is not you apologizing. Will you forgive me is you seeking forgiveness. Yeah. And in order to be forgiven, you have to be apologetic. Mm-hmm. So if you're just saying, I'm sorry, you're you saying, I'm sorry. is just a way because you got caught. Yeah. Or because, yeah, it, it goes or that because way. You're, you're sorry, you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. But you know, um, with that, like you said, being apologetic and in, 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 in stating what what is the truth is being accountable. And yep. I think a lot of people, a lot of men, a lot of men, since we're addressing the men, men have major, major accountability issues. Absolutely. It, 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 that that of course that goes along with having pride. But men, men 
who struggle with mental health mostly have a root of accountability issues. Um, like I, I know I used to never be accountable for nothing because you know, a lot of times I, I would either, you know, argue it down or, or just say, you know, all right, this one go into the grave. Or, you know, we get into right. that place or something like that. To now, to now, those like those those issues or, or anything that I could carry, it hurts me more as a person to not be accountable. The the struggles uh, in my mind or the thoughts of whatever, imagine battling negative thoughts of something you have done wrong and you're constantly dealing with that every single day. 24, you know, out of 24 hours, one of those hours are gonna be spent thinking of what you've done wrong instead of just saying, hey, I wanna be accountable for for this. I wanna take accountability for this and, and it, it allows you to release. Yeah, I, if, you don't, if you don't have a place of, of release, you're, you're going to always struggle. Yeah, from my, from my experience um, being in leadership, and um, you know, I've noticed a lot of the men who deal with uh, addictions. That's the, those are a lot of the men, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's pornography. Pornography is a big one. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's those are the ones I, I tend to find that when you say, Hey, let, let's, let's talk about this. No, nah, man, I'm good. Are you? Yeah. You know, because, uh, man, you know, you and I are both Christians. We, we both believe in, uh, we both believe in God. We've both accepted Jesus as our savior. Um, you know, and, it, and it's, man, I, I, I it, it's, it's tough, dude. Um, you know, I, I did a, I was part of a life group one time where I, I did a, I, I led a small group called the, the struggle is real. And we talked about porn addiction and man, 10% of the men showed up to that thing out of a church of about 400 people, 10% of them. We had 20, 20 to 25 men show up. I was like, wow. To to know that pornography had that much of a stronghold on men in our church. First, it hurt. Like mm -hmm. it, it saddened me. Um, but it was good to know that I wasn't alone and at that time because of of what I'd struggled. Now I'm not couldn't lead a small group if I was uh not freed from it, but it was one of those things that knowing that other men had dealt with it before or were dealing with it at the time. It was just one of those, it was, it was eye opening. And, and that's a, that's an area that I'm really passionate about trying to fight um, and trying to shine the light on because so even in the church, there's so many men who, who think it's okay. So oh, I can look at that with my wife. Nah, man, dude, don't. Why? Oh, well, it's just me and my wife. Yeah, yeah, but dude, don't do that. <laughs> because guess what's happening? It's getting up here. Yeah. And when it when it when it gets up here, you know, think one thing's gonna lead to another. And before you know it, you're you're sucked in the trap of, of addiction all over again. Yeah. And I, I put I put it this way. Any um well that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> you know, I'll get way too deep into it. What but you know, d dealing with uh, circling back, accountability and stuff. What what's some things that that your faith has helped helped you in with uh, um, seeking accountability, with with uh, gaining control of your uh, mental health, with um, being open and transparent. What what's what's some things that your uh, how has your faith played into that? Well, I mean. Um we could talk about different times, like different, like time points of, of my life. Um, you know, when we're, when, since we're talking about myself, um, there has been, you know, like you said, being, being in a place, you know, you've been a praise and worship leader. I've been a praise and worship leader. And, you know, it's it, 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 like you said, as soon as something go wrong and actually the crazy thing is, if you remember how we met, um, 
you know, I, uh, it was because what, you know, I had some car issues yep. and, and, and at your church, your church said, Hey, you know, let's put, they pushed, pushed my car into the actual, um, parking lot. Parking lot. Yep. Yep. And they were, you know what I'm saying? And they was just kind of amazed that, okay, wait, you know, you Seville Newton, like, you know, like, come on in. So, and that was the first time I ever went into the, your church and I saw you up there and that's how we actually met. I remember that day. Um, but you know, like over, over the years with, with, with. I mean, that white boy can sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, over the years with faith, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've struggled, man. Um, you know, I, I'm just being, you know, like I said, being, being a praise and worship leader, had a couple of things, you know, I went through uh, 2018 was almost like, like took me, almost took me all the way out. Uh, you know, leave, you know, being, leaving one church, we both left, left a church and, you know, being in that space to where it's like, oh my God, you know, like you go from, you know, being in church almost four, four, four nights, um, you know, four days a, a, a week um, as a praise and worship leader. And then uh, to go to like no church, you know, especially, you know, especially after being rebaptized in 2018, um, you know, then I went through that spell of not, then I got got back into a church and, you know, different things like that. So I've, obviously over the past five years, I've struggled you know, uh, with it. And, and it, it, it's been like, you know, not, not having that, you know, that having that strength there, you know, has, has led, led me to, you know, um, a lot of those things, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, I didn't have any addictions, but you know what I'm saying? But they, they have led me to a place to where I, I have, have recognition issues on, 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 certain things that um you know were in my life whether it be, be via relationships or um you know uh jobs yeah. being able to um handle whatever whatever um it's been you know i've had those issues because i haven't had my my, my faith my, my my strength in my faith but right now i'm getting to a place to to where that is is turning around for me and and you know, being able to rely on that has been everything. So I'm, I'm so like so thankful to have that to go on. And I think a lot of like like men need to get into faith groups, like uh, Absolutely. get into like research. There are groups everywhere. There are groups in in every area. Um, there are faith groups. There, there. You know, they, every corner is one. Or it don't even have to be a you know start off as a faith group, but just get into find small groups. Find some small groups of men and, to where to where you can actually, like I said, to where you can actually see other men who don't mind being weak around you. Just find sure. those groups. They're out. They're out there. Breakfasts, uh, brunches, uh, men dinners, uh, retreats, uh, different things like that. Um, which I'm hoping to possibly start a start a group once I get myself back to a place where I'm. I feel like I'm ready to lead that group. But men need to find groups that surround them. Just Google, Google it. You Google everything else on your cell phone. You can Google porn. So you know you can you can type in right now. You can type in any type of porn that you would want to watch, and, and it's going to pop up in that in that 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 form. So you can Google small groups. So you can Google like groups for alcohol. You know, I, most people don't even know I had. You know, for for a while I went through that with that. I was struggle with alcohol. So you find those groups to where you can get in with people that that are maybe carrying the same struggles that you are. So you can release, you can be accountable and you can actually, you know, instead of hiding, you can actually, you know, and, and hiding and avoiding, you can fight for yourself. One thing one thing I, I believe in um, is life is done in circles, not rows. Yep. So so many people. And especially in church, so many men will go to church, but they never get connected. Um, and man, getting connected is so important, um, not only within in your local church, but but with people in general. Man, I when my wife and stuff was out of town last week, you know, I just us getting together, man. That, for me, that was that was something that I needed because otherwise, I get stuck at home. And then I'm just like, what am, what am I going to do? What am I doing? And I, I just, I get, uh, 
I start overthinking things. And, um, yeah, so, like, whenever uh, you was available and we hung out last week, I was like, man, for me, I was like, man, that's what that's what I needed. Yeah. Um, just just be able to hang out, jam, talk, um, get some Waffle House. Waffle House is always good. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, man, you know, this went quicker than I thought. Um, uh, what was I going to say? There's one more thing I was going to ask you. Um, what's up? Hold on, I might have it written down. Um, oh, right, there it is. So, and you actually just hit on it. So maybe that's why I couldn't ask it because we're talking mm-hmm. about, uh, I was going to ask you, um, what's a, what's a good way to find good support systems, but you just said, Hey, Hey, Google it. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Yeah. Google, uh, then not only, not only that, I mean, volunteer, you know, like yeah. go, go volunteer, go volunteer with the home. Like I remember the one, my, the first time I uh, went and volunteered with the homeless and the conversations that I was having with, with, um, you know, a, a, a few of the guys there, um, because myself, I, you know, I've, I've had a moment, have had a small moment of, of being homeless, um, by choice, but, um, <laughs> But to to go down there when I when I got to speak with some of them, to hear you know hey well you know I was a lawyer I, I practiced law and 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 to see someone like show that they were actually a lawyer <laughs> and be homeless and or to you know one one of the guys was a father of a of a, a of an MLB baseball player and I was like you know but. To know, like, they were actually, I felt like what they were doing, those guys were so smart and intelligent. I felt like they were using um, that as their community or as their as their their group to actually, you know, find you know find a way to 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 get some strength because that uh, that those guys were so connected with each other. How they. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Past, you know, it was it was just like amazing to watch. But there's so many groups that is um, that is available, um, and so many ways of volunteering to where you can meet some amazing people. I mean, volunteering will allow you to meet because that means you got a heart. When you volunteer to give yourself, give your give time to something or or or, or to 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 whatever it is the mission is the people that are also volunteering have a heart, have a heart too. So, you know, that one person that you made that we spoke about at the beginning of of the podcast could be someone just as a stranger that you could possibly just meet for the first time that could come into your life. See, we get so tied up into like, uh, you know, Oh, this is my family. And, and we got this relationship has to be strong, or, or how we we carry relationships that don't really benefit us uh, for for a lifetime, and we struggle to try to maintain that relationship instead of you know offering ourselves uh, into meeting new new people who can can um, give us like um, you know a, a a strong place to find a strong place to find some strength and power to where we can release and be accountable. So um, I encourage everyone to kind of just go out, volunteer, go out, look for small groups or start small groups, invite others into small groups and just try to, um, you know, see can you, you know, release some of those things there. That's good. Um, before we wrap it up, man, I just want to leave us with a, uh, leave us with a quote. Um, and we're going to go with a quote from good old Saul Bellow. Mm-hmm. Saul Bellow said, a man should be able to hear and bear the worst that could be said to him. And Ernest Hemingway uh, says, there's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. So, Guys, um, first, I want to thank uh, Mr. Seville for joining me tonight. 
Um, this podcast was brought to you by Deso Coffee Lab out of Birmingham, Alabama. Y'all guys, y'all know what I consider myself a coffee connoisseur. I absolutely love coffee. And I have what I believe to be the absolute best coffee out there. With Deso Coffee Lab, you can get coffee that's uh, freshly roasted, delivered directly to your door by subscribing to a monthly subscription, or you can just order it when you need it. Um, head over to the website, www.daysoulcoffeelab.co, and use promo code LOWDOWN for 10% off your order. Um, and uh, guys, remember, um, you're not alone in the fight. So find that someone you can you can talk to. Um, find that group of men that you can uh, circle around, build each other up. Uh, iron sharpens iron. And uh, Savelle, has anyone told you they love you today? Uh, I told myself I love I love me today, and I have had a few people also to tell me that they love. Hey, me. hey, were you getting one more? I love you, man. I love I, you too, brother. And, and, I, and if, I I leave, if I would leave one thing, I would just tell tell every every man out there, you know, just know that no matter what, the world wants you to just trust and believe into all your talents. Um, they want you. The world wants you to believe in um, your circumstances. Or also wants you to believe into the successes and things that you have had in your life, um, and and you just have to know that 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 God wants you to, to trust in Him, and and keep your faith keep your faith strong so you can you can have a a a per, a place of of releasing and find that place where you can release find that one person that can inspire you yourself to. Be you for you and love yourself. Decide and commit to be great and beautiful each and every day. That's the mission statement that I will continue to live on. And I hope many would many of you would grab it and, and also start to live on that. Very good. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you tuning in as always. With my guest, Savelle Newton. My name is Elliot. I love each and every one of you. And as always, let's keep it popping.